Warhammer 40k has a lot to offer, and its universe has many different stories to tell. A lot of you will have realized by now that I have a lot of love for the Imperial Guard. They were my first army on the tabletop, and I really like them. But they are just one of the many factions that I enjoy. Um, yeah, Warhammer 40k is an expensive hobby, but I have dived right into multiple factions. <laughs> um, because I enjoy so many different factions these days that it's made my videos more sporadic because I spend a lot of time painting and playing on the tabletop, which is part of the hobby. But surprisingly, one of my favorite factions have barely had any mention on my channel, and so today I'm here to correct that mistake. This will be one of, hopefully, many videos tackling the Necrons as I try to give you fun, digestible, and informative content about some of our favorite skeleton boys. And today, you will learn the meaning of Necron supremacy. <laughs> but now that you know the details, let's get stuck into it. I have been a fan of Warhammer 40k since I was a kid. I've talked at length in the past about how much love I have for the original Dawn of War video game. Playing that as a kid and having little seven-year-old Kiv saying, Yes! Kill the heretics! is one of my favorite memories. <laughs> so. Understandably, the first time I saw the Dark Crusade opening cutscene and the Necrons in it, they scared the living crap out of me. But something about them at the time, it, it just didn't appeal to me. Like, they seemed so one-dimensional. Many years later, when I seriously got into 40k, I learned more about the faction and found out that they had changed a hell of a lot. They have personality, depth, we get warm, humorous moments from these cold robots, and at times, they almost seem more human than the Imperium itself. Another significant change is their state of decay. In recent years, this has been fleshed out a lot more with so many Necrons that are now broken or going insane. Uh, this is actually what I wanted to start with when addressing the Necrons, because they have changed, and GW has, for lack of a better description, rebranded them in a very interesting way. So I figured it would be best to go through a mixture of old and new lore, comparing the two of them to each other, and so that way you can understand how they have changed, and what kind of Necrons we are seeing in current day Warhammer, because they have come a hell of a long way. And it's very impressive how they've been able to shift this change into the lore. In my opinion, the current Necrons are much more appealing and interesting. You have moments when a Necron has a stutter, so you think, oh no, he's broken. <laughs> However, you find yourself becoming slowly attached to this broken mess of a Necron, and later in the story, when the main character's back is against the wall, he gives his life without a moment's hesitation, with true loyalty that goes beyond anything you'd expect to see from even stalwart members of the Imperium. It is unbelievably heart-wrenching to see something with so much dedication come from the Necrons, especially considering how they used to be. At the same time, their leaders are stubborn and care so much about appearances and tradition 
that they are flawed relics that possess frightening power. They are grumpy old men that are so petty and laughably annoying that seeing Trazin and Orican squabble with world-ending powers at their fingertips, it just, it brings a smile to my face. You know, the duality is one of a kind, and I think that GW nailed it by making this change in direction. So, because of the switch in storytelling for the Necrons, I fell in love with the faction, and they are the army that I use the most on the tabletop. I may start to sound a bit like Luton here, but Necron lore is surprisingly difficult to get your head around, because so many things have changed. You see, there was a time that Necrons had no personality and were seen as Terminator ripoffs that just wanted galactic domination. Since their change in lore, we now have a lot of information that is somewhat questionable, as we don't always know what is currently true in-universe, and information that may have been retconned. It's all a little bit up in the air. Let me give you an example. Necron pariahs used to be a thing, which were psychic blanks that were originally human, taken by the Necrons and made into new Necrons. This is just a whole can of worms that I don't even need to go into anymore. So, pariahs are no longer a thing, but this is not to be confused with the pariah nexus, which is also very interesting. So, there's a lot to it. So, the overall question that a lot of people may have when they learn something about the Necrons is, is all of this material now thrown out the window, or is it only some parts of it that aren't relevant anymore? We don't know, and it's not always stated officially uh, whether GW's going to cover these things or not. So, because of that, we just have to rely on certain bits of information that have stayed consistent, and other bits that are more recent to tell what we currently can go by. Uh, which gives us different snippets or versions that add extra layers as we go on. So, inevitably, as I was learning about the Necrons, some information was conflicting. You know, are they cold, merciless killer robots, or cranky old men that just want you to get off their lawn? Is it maybe a bit of both at the same time? Uh, well, yeah. And part of the fun of all of this is sifting through the information, because when you're looking through codexes and wiki articles, you get this sense of wonder and discovery, especially about this race of ancient aliens. So, what is their history, and how have the Necrons of Warhammer 40k changed? The Necrons are a race of xeno-mechanical beings that were dormant in their stasis tombs for over 60 million years. They are ancient, frighteningly old, even older than the Eldar, and they are waking up and trying to establish the supremacy of the Necron dynasties of old. They are currently building their strength while trying to manage the changes to their own mechanized bodies. Their origins are surprisingly mysterious, and we know very little because there are only a handful of first-hand Necron stories. Most of what they experienced when they were alive is now forgotten, and, and true, we do have many codexes, but these codexes themselves open with something along the lines of Legends and Eldari Myth which means that the information in the Necron Codex is not always from a direct Necron themselves. you know? Either way, uh, there is some repetition and enough crossover to know that the Necrons were not always soulless mechanical beings. They were once flesh and blood. They were an alien race known as the Necron Tear, who lived 
very short lives. The third edition codex states that this was because biologically they were inherently weak. However, the fifth edition codex tells us that they lived short lives because they were plagued by solar winds and radiation storms on their homeworld. Whatever version you prefer, this affected their entire race with cemeteries and tombs that spanned across their entire planet from how quickly and how often they would die. It is stated in multiple Necron Codexes that their dynasties were founded on the anticipation of death, and the living were thought of as no more than temporary residents hurrying through the tombs of their ancestors. They were blighted and consumed, becoming a morbid race with precarious lifespans riven from cradle to grave with constant loss. This death was in the form of persistent and aggressive cancerous lesions. Their entire race was plagued by it, no matter how they lived their lives. It was inevitable. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because the original Necron Codex has some subtle changes from what we see today. The original Codex tells us that they waged war against a race of beings called the Old Ones because they were jealous of their immortality. Current lore, however, is a little different. It states that the Necrons were waging war because the Old Ones were unwilling to share the secrets of immortality or even prolonged life. So they weren't inherently evil, but they did have a reason for their fight. They wanted to be able to prolong their own lives. This war did not go how the Necron tier first envisioned. There was a big power difference, especially in terms of the webway, because the Old Ones had access to this alternate dimension that allowed them to outmaneuver the Necron tier every step of the way. They could not counter this, and because of it, they were defeated every time. And until it got to a point, that they were pushed back to the edges of the stars. They were essentially exiled from the galaxy, but as fate would have it, they came across another series of entities which would later become known as the Catan. According to these original codexes, the Catan would become all-powerful rulers that enhanced the technology of the Necrons even further and gave them the immortality that they desired, shedding their cursed bodies for the metal that we know today. This was accomplished through biotransference, where members of the Necron tier race would have their soul and organic body stripped away while their mind was implanted into the metallic living metal that we know today. In some cases this was done willingly, but in many others it was done forcefully and people were dragged through the bio furnaces that did this and the results would come back to haunt them as they began to realize the decision that they had made. But they had the power that they had desired for so long, so they renewed their war in heaven against the Old Ones. They struck back against the Old Ones, and with the assistance of the Catan, were able to start winning battles. This pushed the Old Ones further and further, to a point where they began to create new races to be able to combat the Necrons and Catan. It was unfortunately not enough, though. The Necrons and Catan were just too strong, and with the taste for mortal souls, the Catan began to feed on the souls of the Old Ones and their subordinate races. With their victory all but assured, 
the Catan would fight and turn against each other. This would eventually result in only a couple of the Catan surviving, with majority of them becoming killed in their own infighting. After many years, when the young races of the universe reassembled as an alliance and fought back with the powers of the warp, which the Necrons and the Catan are unable to use, they were not strong enough to combat a unified alliance of enemies. So with other races on the rise, particularly the Eldar, which would go on to dominate the galaxy, the Necrons understood that their immortality could play to their advantage. So they went into stasis. They began to lock themselves away in their own tomb worlds because they knew that time would always be on their side. What you just heard was mostly old lore, and one of the key differences is that the Necrons never rose back up against the Catan and remained their servants, and this is very different to what we have now, because these two major events, Biotransference, where the Necron tier became the metallic Necrons we know now, and when they turned against the Catan that were essentially trying to make themselves their gods, both of these decisions were from the last Necron King, known as the Silent King, who has only actually been introduced in recent years, and this has just totally shifted up the entire weight of the Necron dynasties and everything we know about the Necrons, because all of this previously was seen as a decision made by the Necrons as a people, and as a separate convergence of dynasties that come together to form their race. From what we know now, these major decisions were actually based on what Zarek, the last of the Silent Kings, wanted for his people. And on a personal note, whenever I read anything about the Silent King, I always find myself getting one answer and five more questions, so a lot of it is shrouded in mystery, but I do happen to appreciate where the old lore has come from, and how the new lore aims to shift that up in a much more interesting way. I mean, I still think that old lore is really cool, because it has some interesting concepts behind it, where there are ideas such as the fourth Catan, called the Outsider, who apparently went batshit crazy insane after consuming tons of other Catan, and is waiting on the edges of the galaxy, biding its time to return. So I think that's really interesting, and something that I would love to see on the tabletop, especially to have another Catan model. If they do that, anything like what they did for the Void Dragon, that the glow up on that is just unreal, you know? Like having something like that as a miniature would be fantastic, and it may even give you an in law excuse to be able to bring back another Primarch and have them team up with, you know, the Lion or Gellerman or something like that. It, it could seriously happen, and you may think that it's a bit of a stretch, but uh, the, the Outsider was mentioned briefly again in the 8th edition Codex, so in my opinion, the door is still open uh, for the most part, but it's probably a, a separate conversation in general when we're talking about Catan, because there's a lot of info out there about them over the years that's happened. But uh, yeah, that mostly accounts for the old Necron lore, and I don't mind it. So if this is your first time hearing about some of the older Necron stuff from 3rd edition and 5th edition Warhammer, uh, please let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below and if you'd like to see other Catan return. Um, or if you're more focused on wanting to see the current ones updated, let me know. 
Essentially, uh, though, I don't really like the fact that the Necrons feel a bit more like a scary afterthought. They don't feel as unique as they do now. I definitely prefer the new Necron lore because they have a lot more depth and personality now. Uh, what we see now in newer Necron lore is a much bigger focus on the Necrons themselves as they have become more fleshed out. Uh, pun intended. <laughs> um, in new lore, after swapping into their metal bodies from biotransference, the Necrons did not worship the Catan as gods, but were kept under the command protocols of Zarek, the Silent King and ruler of all the Necrons. This also opens up a new avenue of storytelling because Zarek gives up his command protocols and gives freedom back to his people. However, this has also caused some backlash because his own people, some of the other Necron Lords, like Imatek, the Storm Lord, have actually risen up in revolt against Zarek and is trying to essentially dethrone him because of the decisions he made. I just love that there are so many different opinions within the Necrons themselves. Some worship Zarek as a god, whereas others like Imatek say, step over son, it's time for a real ruler. And then there are other Necrons that say, eh, we don't give a shit, <laughs> leave us alone. So while this initial discussion of how the Necron lore has changed has ended up spiraling into a much longer video than I anticipated, I did also want to touch on the state of decay that Necrons are also experiencing because this is a major change that wasn't as big of a focus in older lore. After more than 60 million years, the Necrons that have awoken from the Great Sleep are very different. We now know that the living metal bodies that Necrons have are directly linked to their social status in society before biotransference. So for example, nobles and people of higher birth would retain their minds and some of their memories, along with many other added abilities, while normal peasants would just become mindless warriors. All of that is then affected by what happened during the Great Sleep, as some Necrons would become corrupted or have issues reawakening and become partly broken, a shadow of their former selves. This is also reflected in the art that we see, with not as much shiny new metal, but more Necrons showing a bit more of a rusted and worn down Necrodermis. So what you end up with is some Necron Lords that are very witty, advanced, and uh, very sharp, but Others are senile old men that are basically dementia riddled <laughs> and just randomly scream, get to the monoliths. <laughs> it's such an interesting mix that I have never seen before in any other franchise and I love it. This is one of the main changes in the feel of the Necrons, but how about their history? Well, it appears that parts of the old codexes have been retconned and rewritten to give the Necrons themselves a bit more independence. In the new lore, the Catan actually come to Zarek with the offer of biotransference, and apparently after much deliberation, he decides to go through with it, and in doing so, he damns his people. After fighting through the War in Heaven, which I think they're now calling the War of Eons? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, they seem to use the term interchangeably. 
but after defeating the Old Ones and realizing the mistake that he had made, he planned to rebel against the Catan by using the full might of all the unified dynasties. He was then able to defeat the Catan, who had been weakened by infighting. However, their power was so unbelievable, so unimaginable, that outright destroying Catan is next to impossible. So instead, he had the Catan broken into shards. So he had them become pieces, essentially, where they could then be sealed away without as much trouble, and also at the same time, be used as a source of power. Uh, this is where you sometimes see the meme that the Necrons now use their old gods as batteries to power their technology, because they kind of do. <laughs> After doing this, he released the Necron race from his command protocols, and essentially he gave free will back to his people, and he left the galaxy as a, a self-imposed exile. With his return and the reawakening of the Necrons, there are many different places that the Necron race could go. In my opinion, they hold the key to defeating some of the most dangerous enemies of the universe, such as Chaos and the Tyranids. It is still shrouded with so much mystery, but uh, some Necron technology and what they are doing with the Pariah Nexus has a strong chance of actually just outright shutting off Chaos because it breaks and essentially uh, gets rid of the warp. So uh, this is kind of assuming though that the old Necron men can stop arguing with one another long enough to actually do it, <laughs> which I love. So that's one interesting part about how they are now, and then another part is the Destroyer Cults, which are another interesting aspect of Necron lore which has become about when corrupted Necrons have been wanting to eliminate all forms of life and have modified their bodies into these hulking weapons platforms on their own. Like They don't even resemble anything that looks humanoid at all anymore. They have lo levitating bases and everything. Uh, you know, then you've got the flayed ones, Necrons that have slowly regressed into mindless flesh-craving monsters, which may be rooted in a virus that was caused by a group of Necrons who were the only ones to outright kill a Catan. But then that virus has begun to spread about from various corners of the galaxy, and it appears that the Necron race seems to almost have uh, the chance of becoming cursed with the Flayer virus. At the end of the day, it's so nice and refreshing to see this robotic, cold race become so much more. They are a secret linchpin for the galaxy, and with so many mysteries and bits of knowledge that aren't fully explained, it has me constantly at the edge of my seat. It makes me want to see them continue to change with the setting and develop into more than what they were. The, the Necrons are no longer Terminator ripoffs. They have truly become so much more. I hope that you have all enjoyed this video, because this feels like the logical point to call it for now. I know that this video is a little disjointed, but please understand that there are so many aspects that I will start explaining and then realize it's become a massive tangent, or other situations where I, I get midway through writing a whole page and then realize that it kind of warrants its own video. <laughs> like the Pariah Nexus, or the Catan themselves, or e even what Zarek got up to on his exiled journey. The list goes on, but hopefully you all enjoyed the video and you do want to see uh, more of the Necrons, and you've developed a little bit of love for them like I have. Uh, 
I say a little bit, but they actually are one of my favorites. <laughs> so please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to see more. Otherwise, I may just want to move on to other topics if it doesn't get enough traction on YouTube. But that's just been a bit of an introduction to the Necrons and how they have changed. So hopefully I will get to see you all on the next one where we can tackle a little bit more about them. But uh, that's just about it from me. So I've been Kiv and I'll see you all on the next one.